Hey, I, I can't believe I almost forgot. It's 2012. Well, if you've been living under a rock for about five years or so, here's the claim. On December 21st, 2012, yes, in less than two months, we're all going to die. Or something. It depends on who you're talking to. It's supposed to be the end of the world, at least as we know it. Maybe it's going to be the death of all life on Earth, maybe it's going to be the beginning of some new age of enlightenment, some spiritual new age crap, I don't know. Different people say different things, but the point is, the world as we know it is going to end on December 21st. Yeah, sure. Basically, it's your average doomsday prophecy. But it's one that all the wackos out there seem hell-bent on getting every sucker in the world to believe in. Actually, this is a combination of several crazy ideas. I'll try to sort it all out, and hopefully that'll make it clear just how stupid this whole thing is. Let's start with a date. Why December 21st, 2012? Well, to answer that, we need to look at the calendar used by the Maya, who allegedly predicted that the world would end on that day. When specifying dates over long periods of time, the Maya used a system called the long count. 20 days make one uinol. I'm sorry if I mispronounced these words, by the way. 18 uinols make one tune. 20 tunes make one ka tune. 20 ka tunes make one bak tune. Dates are given as bak tune, ka tune, tune, uinol, day. The calendar begins with the Mayan creation date, which on our calendar is August 11th, 3114 BCE. That makes December 20th, 2012, 12, 19, 19, 17, 19. Meaning that December 21st is 13, 0, 0, 0, 0. That means absolutely nothing. Or wait, does it? Could it be that the Mayans predicted that the end of the 13th Bach tune would coincide with the end of the world? No. But even if they did, big deal. The fact that they did a pretty good job of predicting planetary alignments, eclipses, and stuff like that, doesn't mean that if the Mayans predicted it, it must be true. Especially if we're talking about something completely different, like the end of the world through no specified mechanism, or the beginning of some new age of enlightenment. Again, through no specified mechanism. But really, all the Mayan prophecy crap does is provide the date. How was the world supposed to end? Well, that comes from somewhere else. Ever heard of Nancy Leader? Well, she's probably lying or mentally ill, but she claims to be in telepathic contact with aliens. In 1995, they apparently told her that the world was going to end when Planet X passes by close to us on May 27th, 2003. As 2003 came and went, and no Planet X was anywhere to be seen, the aliens contacted her again and said, yeah, we were just testing you. It will happen, but we're not going to tell you when, because if we do, the governments will declare martial law and people will be trapped in the cities when all hell breaks loose, blah, 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 blah. By the time the Mayan bullshit had become widely known, people naturally assumed that Planet X would arrive on December 21st, 2012. Don't ask why. Planet X was a hypothetical major planet beyond the orbit of Neptune, hypothesized to exist because of anomalies in the orbits of Uranus and Neptune. In 1989, Voyager 2 flew past Neptune, and the data obtained showed astronomers that their estimates of Neptune's mass was incorrect. In 1992, it was shown that this new data fits perfectly with the observed orbits of both planets, falsifying 
the hypothesis that some unknown major body is messing with our orbits because the orbits aren't being messed with. If there is a major planet further out, it's very distant, and there's no way such a planet could ever come anywhere near Earth. Ever. An orbit with such high eccentricity would be highly unstable, and the planet would be ejected from the solar system because of gravitational interactions with other planets. Even in the ridiculously improbable case that the leader is neither lying nor insane, her claim simply cannot be true. Now enters Zachariah Sitchin, a science fiction writer whose books are set in a reality where the gods of the ancient world were aliens and the Babylonians had a space program. Okay, I haven't read his books. Maybe they're good, I don't know, but it got a bit silly when Sitchin claimed that his work was based on his interpretation of real Sumerian clay tablets. No actual scholar that has actually studied this stuff agrees with Sitchin's interpretation. And as I'm sure you guessed, Sitchin himself has no academic background relevant to the subject in question. Well, had. He died in 2010. According to Sitchin, the Babylonians knew about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. This is absolutely absurd, as they can't be seen with the naked eye, and the telescope hadn't been invented at the time. I guess aliens told them. Now, since they knew about those bodies, according to Sitchin, it's highly likely that another planet they knew about, according to Sitchin, also exists, even though modern astronomers haven't discovered it, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of stupid. This mysterious planet is, of course, Nibiru, home of the Anunnaki. <laughs> yeah, of course there are aliens living there. And again, this is still just according to Sitchin. No scholar says that the Babylonians believed there was a planet called Nibiru. The word Nibiru means crossing and refers to the highest point a planet has in the sky and any planet occupying that position. At least that's how I understood it. I may be wrong, but what's very clear is that it's an astronomical term, not a specific object. Sometimes Jupiter is Nibiru, sometimes Mercury is Nibiru, and so on. Apparently, Jupiter being Nibiru was significance to them. They called Jupiter Marduk after their highest god, the king of heaven. And, well, when Jupiter was Nibiru, the king of heaven was in his throne. Or something like that. Regardless, when Nancy Leader read Sitchin's books in the late 90s, she claimed that Nibiru, the fictional planet, not the position in the sky, was the same object as Planet X. And yes, it's supposed to have the same impossible orbit, so it could actually be the case. But Sitchin explicitly denied this and wrote in his next book that the next time Nibiru comes close to us will be in about 900 years. And now, before you go on saying that Sitchin might be wrong about that, remember that he actually knows everything about Nibiru. He's the one who made it up. So let's sum up. A crazy woman claims that aliens told her about the end of the world. She reads a couple of sci-fi novels that the author claims are based on ancient writings that, of course, he can't read. The crazy woman assumes that the probably intentionally dishonest author's story confirms that her delusions are true. Said author explicitly denies that this is the case. Morons think that the end of the 13th Bakhtun means the end of the world. Um, like the end of the 12th. I mean, can you, can you imagine if people had believed that back then? I mean, that would have been stupid. Same morons here about the crazy woman's claims connect the two bullshit ideas and use the aforementioned author's fictional work as evidence, even though it, too, is completely unrelated. Can this get any more stupid? Yes.